Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Also, welcome to part four of the 1022 Precision Upgrade series. Now, if you've missed part one through three, definitely take a moment, go back and review those videos. It will give you a much better idea of what we're doing in this series. So here in part four, we're gonna take a look at two things. The first thing is, is the KRG Bravo chassis for the 1022. And the second thing is, is we're gonna redo our action screw torque test. So since we've changed the stock, the Hobe, Hobe Overmold to the KRG, we've essentially changed the relationship between how the receiver sits in the stock or chassis. So it's a good idea to redo that action screw torque test just to see where the rifle shoots best with the new chassis installed. So definitely uh, stick around for those results. They absolutely surprised me. Um, again, we are going to be using the exact same ammo, the exact same lot, everything is the exact same other than the stock. If you have any interest in me doing a deep dive in the KRG Bravo, also leave me a comment below. I've been shooting KRG products for a while, but just first thoughts on this. I really like all the features that come included. You've got an M-Lock end. KRG makes a ton of accessories. It looks like the front of the chassis is drilled and tapped for a night vision bridge. Uh, I really like that there's an adjustable cheek piece. Um, but some caveats is you kind of have to finagle with it to get everything just right. There's a couple internal things that you can do based on a shim system and an action block system where you can uh, kind of change the dimensions around to cradle your action the best or your receiver the best. So that was kind of trial and error to figure out. And also the length of pull on this chassis is extremely short. Uh, those are kind of my only caveats on it other than the accuracy results that we're going to get into. So stick around. Let me get these targets up here on the bench and we will take a look at this uh, action screw torque test. All right, so we've got the targets here on the table. I don't know if I mentioned before, but this is all shot at 50 yards. We have the Hogue Overmold here on the left and the KRG Bravo here on the right. Now with the Hogue, we did shoot a foul group at 15 inch pounds. With the Bravo, I was shooting a good bit before. I probably shot, I don't know, 30, 40 rounds prior to doing this test. So my barrel was adequately fouled with the RWS rifle match on the KRG. So we didn't need to shoot that foul group. But anyways, let's move into the 15 inch pound uh, value here. So on the Hogue, as you can see, we shot groups in the 0.8s here at 50 yards. When we moved over to the KRG, it was quite interesting. We shot an inch and a half group and then we shot a 0.7 group. So that was a little bit interesting to see. Moving down to the 17 and a half inch pound groupings, we shot a group in the sevens and a group in the fours. So we had a sub half inch group there with the Hogue Overmold. Moving over to the KRG Bravo, we shot two groups over 1.2 inches. So this was a little bit disheartening to see, but our, both of our averages on the KRG have been over an inch at 50 yards, which again, like I said, wasn't great to see. Move these, go to the next ones. Moving to 20 inch pounds over here with the Hogue Overmold, we shot a group in the eights and a group at nine tenths of an inch. On the KRG Bravo, we shot a group just over an inch at 1.1 and a group just shy of an inch at, nine point, at 0.965. So again, our average is over an inch here, where our average with the Hogue is in the eights. Moving to 22 and a half inch pounds, looking at the Hogue, we shot half of an inch group and a three quarter of an inch group. Moving to the KRG at 22 and a half inch pounds, we shot an inch group and also an inch and a half group. So again, like we said, our averages here are well over an inch compared to the Hogue. Then last group here at 25 inch pounds, we shot just over an inch on the Hogue and then a, a group in the sevens, about three quarters of an inch. And then moving over to 25 inch pounds on the KRG, we shot 1.1 inches and then 2.1 inches. So that was kind of crazy to see, averaging over an inch and a half. So that kind of wraps that up. Stick around, I've already shot the groups. I've done the ammunition testing. Be on the lookout for part five. I think that you'll be fairly interested in that just to kind of see how those groups played out when we shot some different ammunition. But after I saw this, like I said, I was a little bit disheartened, especially for a, I mean, I think this chassis goes for like 300 bucks plus. And like I said, I pay for everything here on the channel out of pocket. So 
Um, other than the amenities that you get, like the adjustable cheek piece, um, like the ability to attach M-Lock stuff, maybe do like an Arca Braille on it, uh, you know, the list goes on. I wasn't super impressed in the accuracy department, but um, I do have a kid bolt on the way as well. That's gonna be in part six. So like I said, if you're interested, stick around, subscribe, leave me a comment below, let me know what you think. Um, I've crossed my T's, I dotted my I's on this. So like I said, I was just a little bit surprised to see this group like this, but we'll finagle with it a little bit more. If it doesn't work out, maybe we'll give the Victor Titan a try. But for now, we're gonna roll with it and uh, make sure to tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog. Tell your dog I said hi. We'll see you in the next one.